Welcome to the Passion of Minds course content review. In this lesson, you'll learn about the four main types of biochemical reactions that occur within a living system. It is important to understand how these reactions occur as they will become a common theme in the course. There are four main types of biochemical reactions that occur between biological molecules, such as condensation, hydrolysis, neutralization, and oxidation reduction. However, we first have to talk about macromolecules first, as they are the repeating smaller subunits and they're involved in many of these reactions. So macromolecules are large complex molecules that are composed of repeating smaller subunits and they're covalently linked. So the smaller repeating subunits are referred to as monomers, as we see over here, but the large macromolecules are known as polymers. So this is a macromolecule and it's known as a polymer chain. So macromolecules, they can be broken or formed through hydrolysis and condensation reactions respectively. So in this case, as we're forming a molecule, that would be a condensation reaction. But as we break down the molecules this way, that is a hydrolysis reaction. So catabolism and anabolism, the main thing about these types of uh, reactions is that you're, you're either going to break down or produce a larger macromolecule. So in catabolism specifically, what happens is that you have reactions which will break macromolecules into individual monomer subunits, and as a result, you'll produce energy. But in anabolism, what happens is that reactions, you have reactions that produce large molecules from smaller subunits. So you must input energy in the small, smaller molecules to form a larger molecule in general. So larger molecules will store more energy and energy is released when the bonds are broken. Condensation reactions, also known as dehydration synthesis, uh, have two molecules that combine to form a single molecule with the loss of water. So you're, general, you're basically dehydrating it, you're losing water. So molecules with projecting H atoms are linked to other molecules with projecting OH groups. So you see the H over here and you see the OH over here. What happens is water is pulled out and as a result, you're going to have a formation of a glycosidic linkage. So glycosidic linkages or glycosidic bonds are commonly found in carbohydrates specifically. So what you get is you get a polysaccharide. And uh, these individual monomers, these monomers over here, these are known as monosaccharides. In an ester linkage, what happens is that you have, uh, let's just say we have a carboxylic acid uh, attached to an R group. So this is the carboxylic acid. And you have a alcohol. So we'll say the hydroxyl and then you have it attached to some R chain. Uh, so this is the alcohol. So what happens when you have a formation of an ester is the OH from the carboxylic acid and the H from the alcohol will combine to form water and it'll get released from here. So as a result, you're going to have the formation of this over here. So this is known as an ester. As we'll discuss later on in the court, uh, in the unit, when we touch on fats, a glycerol looks something like this. And a fatty acid looks something like this. So let's just say we have three of these for each portion over here. So, so what happens is the glycerol plus fatty acids 
will come together through a condensation reaction uh, and result in the formation of this over here. So you're going to have the release of three H2O uh, molecules. But you're going to have the formation of a triglyceride. In the third type of condensation reaction, you have what you call peptide bond formation. So a peptide bond is, uh, is an amide linkage that holds amino acids together in polypeptides. So in this case, you have one and two. You have two amino acids, and you have the formation of a polypeptide. And what connects the two amino acids is a formation of a peptide bond. So as a result of this condensation reaction, you're going to have the release of water. So unlike uh, condensation reactions that are anabolic, hydrolysis reactions are catabolic reactions where water is added to break the covalent bonds between monomer subunits. So in this case, we see that water is being added over here, and this bond over here is being lysed, hence the term hydrolysis. Hydro meaning water, lysis meaning to break. In this reaction, we see a large molecule being split into smaller subunits by breaking this covalent bond over here. So this happens because we're adding water into this reaction. So a hydrogen atom is added to one subunit, while a hydroxyl group is added to the other subunit. So we see that this H2O, OH is over here, and the H2O's, H, one of the H's is over here. Before we talk about the neutralization reaction, we first need to talk about the characteristics of acids and bases. So acids, they have a sour taste. They're able to conduct electricity and they turn the blue litmus paper red. So acids, they uh, they're a substance that releases hydrogen ions, so they're known as protons, when dissolved in water. So a H plus ion, when I write H plus, the reason why I call it a proton is because it's simply a hydrogen atom minus its electron. So what does that leave? It just leaves a single proton, so we call it a proton. So in an aqueous solution, an acid dissolves to produce a hydronium ion. So a hydronium ion is what you call H3O plus. Written in short form, it is known as just a proton, so it's H plus. So the reaction of, let's say we have uh, HCl. So the reaction of HCl with water can be written in either of these two ways. So we have HCl plus H2O to form H3O plus plus Cl minus. Or we could just write HCl forms H plus plus Cl minus. In this case, we're both saying the same thing, but we're just eliminating the water from this equation over here, from this equation over here. But they both make sense because an acid releases protons, so the proton will go to the water over here, and that's why you'll have the formation of hydronium. And same thing here, it just dissociates and, uh, into the proton and the Cl minus, so the conjugate base. So bases, the main characteristics about bases are that they are slippery and they turn red litmus paper blue and they taste very bitter. So bases, they'll accept protons or they'll release a hydroxide ion. So in this example over here, we see sodium hydroxide reacting with water. So in this case, water acts as an acid and it'll donate a H plus, a proton to sodium hydroxide. 
And then in this case, you're going to have a dissociation that occurs. So you're going to result in a sodium ion. You're going to have a hydroxide ion. And you're going to have the formation of uh, water. Now, when acids and bases react, they tend to form conjugate pairs. So conjugate pairs are based on the gaining or loss of protons between two compounds in the reaction. So in this case, the acid will lose a uh, proton, so that will become the conjugate base. But the base will gain, uh, will gain the proton, and that will become a conjugate acid. So when we're in chemical equilibrium, what can happen is reaction occurs on both sides. So the conjugate acid now, H3O+, plus, will, uh, will donate its proton to the conjugate base, and you will have your acid that reforms again. So conjugate acids are acids that gain a proton during their reaction, and conjugate bases are bases that lose protons during their reaction. A pH scale is a numerical scale that is used to classify solutions as either acidic, so below 7, or basic, above some, uh, 7, or neutral if it's just around the 7 range. So when it's more acidic, what's going to happen is you're going to have greater quantity of protons relative to high, uh, OH, so hydroxides, ions. Uh, if it's basic, you're going to have a greater proportion of hydroxide ions relative to the protons. So in a neutralization reaction, what happens is an acid is mixed with the base, resulting in a neutralized solution because of the water that is formed and a neutral salt that is formed. So we see over here, let's give an example of HCl plus Na OH, you have the formation of water and some kind of salt. So let me annotate this. So you have an acid plus a base, you have the formation of water and some kind of neutral salt, which depends as you get onto more advanced classes, but for now we'll just say it's a neutral salt. Um, so here we see that the proton from the HCl is being donated and the hydroxide from the sodium hydroxide is also being donated here. And that will result in a formation of water. So this is a neutralization reaction. In the human body, different organs contain a narrow pH range. So the pH of gastric juices in the stomach have uh, a pH range of 1 to 2, and in intestinal juice it has a pH range of 8 to 9, which is basic. So if the blood pH is too high or too low, you'll result in many health issues. So we'll talk about acid alkalosis first. So alkalosis is when the blood pH is increased. So uh, that results in a person feeling dizzy or agitated. In acidosis, what happens is the blood pH decrease, uh, decreases. And as a result, a person might feel disoriented, they'll vomit, they, have, they could have brain damage, and even kidney disease. So it's critical that the pH of blood remains constant, because uh, if you have changes of even 0 0.2 to 0 0.4 in your blood pH, that can result in serious medical conditions, which, if not corrected, could lead to death. So to prevent the body's pH levels from deviating from the norm, there are many buffers present that help maintain an optimal, optimal pH level. So a buffer is a substance that minimizes changes in the concentrations of hydrogen and hydroxide ions in a solution. So a buffer solution is typically composed of a weak acid and its conjugate base, and it'll reversibly combine with hydrogen ions. So a buffer will release, it'll release H plus ions when the solution is too basic, or it will accept H plus ions when the, when the conditions are too acidic.
So blood is well buffered by plasma proteins and by hemoglobin, which can accept or donate protons. So the most important buffer system in human blood is the pairing of carbonic acid, so H2CO3, and bicarbonate, HCO3 minus. So they provide a mean for the necessary removal of carbon dioxide produced by metabolism in the tissues. So what I mean by metabolism, metabolism is the result of cellular respiration, which is CO2. So CO2 will combine with water in the blood to form carbonic acid, H2CO3, but carbonic acid is uh, unstable and will split to H plus or HCO3 depending on the conditions. So a process that will acidify blood will be neutralized by the bicarbonate ions and they will minimize the change in pH. But a process that will alkalize the blood, so it will increase the pH of blood, will be neutralized by the concentration of carbonic acid that is present. Finally, in oxidation reduction reactions, Many chemical reactions involved in cellular respiration and photosynthesis involve the transfer of electrons. So in terms of the transfer of electrons, you're dealing with redox reactions. So oxidation is a process that results in the loss of electrons. And in reduction, what happens is you have the gain, gaining of electrons. So the way I remember this is Leo the lion goes grr. So you see oxidation and you see reduction over here. Okay, so in terms of this over here, what happens is you have a reducing agent. A reducing agent is what's oxidized and an oxidizing agent is what is reduced. So in this case, you have the losing of electrons and you have the gaining of electrons here. So this guy will gain electrons, this guy will lose the electrons. Now when we discuss this diagram over here, we see that a series of redox reaction will occur when the product of one redox reaction becomes the reactant in the other. So the product of this redox reaction here becomes the reactant in another redox reaction. So this is usually seen in reactions that want to transport electrons. The next oxidizing agent, however, must be stronger than the previous one. So that has to deal with electronegativity and we'll get more in that subject when we talk about uh, metabolism. Now over here, what you see is NAD. NADH and NAD+. So NADH is a coenzyme that is used in cellular respiration to transport electrons in a series of redox reactions. So NADH, however, is a reduced form. So it gains the electrons and it carries the electrons to another oxidizing agent. So once it's oxidized, it will become NAD+, and then it'll be ready to accept electrons from a reducing agent. So something that will give it the electron.